It's Thursday the 2nd of March, day four at Mobile World Congress 2017. Here are today's headlines. The 5G IA isn't for rushing 5G standardization in Europe. 5G standardization's roadmap is in 3G PP hands. SK Telecom takes driving to the max and the GSA and GSMA are buddying up on 5G spectrum. Hello and welcome to Telecom TV at Mobile World Congress 2017. Members of the 5G Infrastructure Association have a big appetite for new services, but the organisation says good things come to those who wait. We are at, at a turning point. 5G was a lot about research and just initial standardisation. Now standardisation is really taking up and 5G, 5G IA will be working also a lot on the trials. So getting some uh, proof of concepts, getting 5G becoming in the field so that we can get the, the real understanding of what will be the benefits of 5G. First, we believe that 5G, we need a significant step forward compared to 4G. So it's something that really needs to bring some additional performances. And to really then get the benefit of that, we will do it. We need to get the, our hands on these technologies and that will come step by step. So we need, we need new radio performances. We also need new core network and we need new end-to-end -end performance. And to really understand how to get the best use, use of all these, we need to progressively deploy them, test them, small scale, large scale, and at the end provide uh, good services to the customers. We are very attached to the respect of the standardization process uh, that uh, is being defined notably by 3GPP and ITU uh, for uh, 2020 uh, full commercial launch. Uh, and it's the reason why uh, we are coordinating this uh, uh, 5G uh, trials roadmap strategy in order to encourage verticals and actors to uh, make uh, real life trials and experimentations. But of course, uh, we are keen uh, that the standardization pro process does not delay and uh, we will of course encourage standard bodies uh, to go as fast as possible in this process. And we also have launched a cooperation uh, move uh, with uh, other 5G uh, trade associations in the world, with uh, China, uh, Japan, South Korea, uh, North America, and now Brazil, since we have just signed an MOU with the uh, 5G Brazil Association, TeleBrazil. So this international cooperation will also take an important role. And in end of May, we will have the third 5G global event that will take place in Japan under the umbrella of our counterparts of 5G MF in Japan. At next week's 3G PP meeting, the fate of 5G's release 15 hangs in the balance. And with so many companies pushing for 5G standardization early, there's a lot to lose. So we have multiple releases that are occurring that we're standardizing at the same time. We're completing release 14 and we're, we're sort of in the middle of release 15. Uh, next week, at a very important meeting, we're going to complete the requirement standards, and we're midway in terms of the, the architecture, and what we'll decide next week is the time plan and the contents of the new radio release. So the whole organization needs to come around that and determine what are our priorities. At the upcoming meeting, we're going to identify the goals and timelines for both the standalone and non-standalone architecture. The Contentious points, if there are any, will be on the contents of the release and the timing. We also have to make sure that we are able to move ahead with what we call forward compatibility and that the uh, non-standalone and standalone systems are compatible. There is certainly interest, quite a lot of activity, and we'll have to see what we can accomplish. 3GBP will, has a, a process by which what we cannot complete in one release moves to the next. So we certainly will make excellent progress in this release. The pursuit of all things cool for SK Telecom is fast and furious as it showcases its 5G connected car designed in conjunction with Ericsson and BMW. Yeah, so SK Telecom as a mobile operator provides connectivity to the customers. So, and if you see at the uh, mobile uh, MWC event uh, here, then uh, uh, you can see that uh, many people are interested in uh, uh, connected car and autonomous driving. And when the autonomous driving is not actually uh, not uh, here now, but when it comes in the future, the drivers, the car can do more things rather than just driving. So, for example, uh, uh, so for example, uh, UHD streaming or AR, VR, or even the driver safety features. So, as a mobile operator, we think that 
uh, providing the 5G connectivity will enable, uh, uh, will provide more uh, innovate, uh, innovative services to the customers. So for example, uh, uh, and uh, 5G connectivity is important because it pro uh, is, uh, can provide a high speed uh, transmission rate, so that which is basically enabling the uh, services like ARVR and also the 5G uh, uh, has a very low latency uh, characteristic so that uh, it, it will enable the driver safety. So basically, uh, the, if you look at the uh, new services uh, in, the, in the connected car, then for example, the, the services like AR and VR requires a lot of uh, uh, frequency uh, resources. And we can use the millimeter wave technology uh, to achieve uh, the like giga BPS level transmission rate so that uh, the, new, the drivers in the car can experience new services like AR and VR. And also for the driver safety, the low latency is essential. And uh, the 5G has a, a, is a, a new framework so that uh, it can, uh, the, uh, the transition time delay between the infrastructure side and the user side is very, uh, the delay is very low so that it can help uh, uh, drivers alarm, for example, if there is an accident in front of him, and he can let the, the driver know that there is an, uh, he can give him an alarm so that he can prepare uh, and avoid the accident. Actually, SK Telecom is a fast mover in this uh, effort. So we already had a, a driving center in Korea and we tested the mobility uh, using the millimeter wave uh, technology. So for example, we already achieved a groundbreaking record, for, uh, for example, 3.6 uh, giga BPS uh, transmission rate uh, at the speed of as high as 170 kilometers per hour. So, which is very astonishing uh, result. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, we uh, already uh, uh, achieved this uh, uh, good result. And in the next, uh, uh, for the next 12 months, uh, currently uh, what we're gonna do is to reduce the size of the uh, device and also we want to make it light so that it can practically uh, commercially uh, used by the subscribers. The need for harmonised spectrum for LTEA and 5G is bringing the GSA and GSMA together. GSA and the GSMA have just signed a memorandum of understanding on spectrum. Uh, GSA set up its own uh, spectrum group uh, with our members uh, from the vendors uh, last year uh, and that's been operating very, very well and effectively. Uh, but there are times when we need to cooperate with the operator group, the GSMA, on spectrum issues so that we get the best use of our resource and also we're not duplicating efforts. And so we need to make sure that there is um, the timely availability of harmonized spectrum on a global basis so that, we are, uh, so that you know, the services like uh, Gigabit LTE and 5G can be met. There's going to be some big changes now as we're going towards that Gigabit LTE and 5G and we're going to need uh, more coverage as we bring in uh, you know, the Internet of Things and things need to be connected uh, in, in remote areas. And at the moment we are measuring ourselves on population coverage of, our, of, of networks, but that doesn't give generally very good geographical coverage or landmass coverage. And so we need to think about how do we extend that. We get some of it with better coverage with narrowband IoT, but we're also going to need to find new ways to develop uh, extended coverage so we're covering landmass, not just people. I think there are, there are times when you, uh, maybe you need uh, spot coverage at times. So a good example would be a farmer could actually send out a drone uh, that is a, a cell site to pick up a data from sensors that are in his field or his network or even you know, from animals, uh, sheep for instance. So you know, there are lots of new ways we can think about how we can extend coverage even permanently or uh, just uh, at a, at an, on an ad hoc basis. That's all for today and indeed all week from Mobile World Congress 2017. From all the Telecom TV team here in Barcelona, thanks for watching, see you next year and goodbye.